So hi, hi class. Uh, welcome to the online pathology, and we are going to discuss about the types of hypersensitivity reaction, starting with the type one and type two hypersensitivity reaction slides. So for today's session, we are going to discuss on five slides. So we are going to discuss on slide 71, that is acute allergic interstitial nephritis. We have slide 137, that is bronchial asthma. Then we have uh, type 2 hypersensitivity reaction with slide number 29, that is good pasture syndrome. Slide 170, that is Graves' disease. And slide 198, pemphigus. Okay, so we will start. Okay, so our first slide would be slide 71. So we are going to talk about type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Type 1 hypersensitivity reaction uh, is a type of reaction that would show production of IgE. And that will result in the recruitment of inflammatory cells. So this is uh, slide 71, acute allergic interstitial nephritis. This is a kidney tissue. And acute allergic interstitial nephritis would occur in patients who had history of exposure to allergens such as drugs. So the most common cause for acute allergic interstitial nephritis would be drug exposure. So our patients can manifest with fever, with eosinophilia, and then later on they can present with renal abnormalities. So what do we have to look for in the in the tissue in the slide? So before we talk about the different features for acute allergic interstitial nephritis, we have to first uh, have a basic review on what we should look for in a kidney tissue. So first of all, we have the glomerulus, we have the tubules, we have the interstitium what, that would form as the support or the stroma of the different components, and lastly, we have the blood vessels. Okay? So in acute allergic interstitial nephritis, because of the IgE production, we can have the presence of uh, congestion or edema. In this case, we would see the presence of congestion and this is identified with the presence of congested vascular channels. Notice, normally we do not expect to see uh, dilated or congested vascular channels in the normal tissue. But in this case, you would see the presence of congested blood vessels filled with red blood cells. Look at the glomerular capillaries. You can also see dilated capillary, capillary lumen filled with red blood cells. So, and then we also would identify the presence of inflammatory cells uh, in the interstitial. That's why it's called an interstitial nephritis, where you would see the presence of uh, inflammatory cells. The inflammatory cells here would be plasma cell, lymphocytes or some of them would be segmenters but eosinophils are not present in this particular slide okay so next we go to the another type 1 hypersensitivity reaction slide which is slide 137 okay? this is bronchial asthma so uh, this is a lung tissue and we have to look for a bronchial lumen and this is a bronchial lumen. So in bronchial asthma, we have the two types, atopic and non-atopic. The atopic type would show IgE uh, production. And this is due to exposure to allergens. So what are those allergens? We can have uh, dust, we have pollen, we can have dander, or even food. So any form of allergen that can cause bronchial asthma. Okay, so the bronchial asthma in patients would manifest with difficulty of breathing. So difficulty of breathing characterized by wheezing. And 
So you can see here we have a lumen that is filled with mucus. So this is what we call as the mucus plug. Okay. And then there are other histologic features that would cause bronchoconstriction. So we're going to touch on that. So first of all, we have this mucus glands which would be hyperplastic. So there's an increase in the number of glands. That's why we would see the presence of mucus plugging. Aside from that, you can also identify the presence of this hypertrophic smooth muscle fibers. So there's smooth muscle hypertrophy in the bronchial, uh, in the bronchial wall. And then we also have thickening of the basement membrane. And lastly, you look at the high power magnification and identify for presence of eosinophilia. So, eosinophils. So, eosinophils are characterized by the presence of eosinophilic or acidophilic granules within its cytoplasm. Okay. So, this would be type, uh, this would be bronchial asthma which would be a feature of type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. So now we go to the type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. So there we have three slides. So we will start with uh, slide number 29. So slide number 29 is labeled as good pasture syndrome. So you try to look at the areas okay, on the slide and then center on um, the areas with hemorrhage. So what is a good pasture syndrome? Good pasture syndrome would be characterized by presence of antibodies directed against the alpha-3 chain of type 4 collagen. This is seen in the, in the basement membrane of the glomerulus as well as in the basement membrane of the alveolus. Uh, so, if the patients would manifest only with renal abnormalities, then that is called an anti-glomerular basement membrane disease. However, if these patients would manifest with uh, would manifest with uh, pulmonary hemorrhage, uh, then this would be identified as good pasture syndrome. So what are the features? So you look at the, uh, the histologic pattern. Uh, this is characterized by having hemorrhagic interstitial pneumonitis. Okay. So hemorrhagic interstitial pneumonitis. So presence of hemorrhage okay, within the interstitium. So this is, this is the alveolar space. This would be the interstitium or alveolar wall. You can see the presence of areas of hemorrhage identified with the presence of red blood cells. And then we also have the presence of interstitial pneumonitis characterized by the presence of inflammatory cells, notably mononuclear cells, you can also have the presence of uh, histiocytes. Okay? So, this would be good pasture syndrome. Okay? So, next we have slide 170. Uh, this is Graves disease. So, Graves disease is uh, caused by the presence of antibodies against the uh, thyroid stimulating hormone or the TSH receptor. So there can be a stimulating type or a blocking type. In 90% of cases, we have the thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin. So this would cause hyperthyroidism. Good pasture syndrome is the most common cause of endogenous hyperthyroidism. So when you have hyperthyroidism, it means that there would be a hyperplasia. So what are the features that we would see in the slide? So we're going to identify the presence of the follicles. So these are the thyroid follicles. Notice that they are variably sized. There's a variation in their sizes. And normally, the 
follicle uh, would be ovoid or oval, okay? the lining epithelium of the of the of the thyroid follicle would be cuboidal like this one. However, in uh, in Graves' disease, we would see crowding or hyperplasia. And this is characterized by an increase in the number of cells present in the follicle. That's why there would be presence of patile, overcrowding that would be causing, uh, be causing the papillary formation. Okay? Aside from that, we would also identify for the presence of these lymphoid follicles. So these are the lymphoid follicles that we would see. Okay? Lymphoid follicles. So, uh, so this is because it's an autoimmune disorder. And lastly, we have slide 198. Slide 198 is labeled as pemphigus. So pemphigus is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction brought about by antibodies against desmoglein. Glain, B E S M O G L E I N. So, desmoglein is an addition molecule that would be located in the epidermis. Once we have antibodies against it, it will cause a dissolution of the adhesion, resulting to the presence of a space. So, here you can see it. This is what we call as a blister. In layman's term, we call it as blister. Uh, but the medical term for this is acantholysis. Acantholysis or separation of the layers of the epidermis. Okay. So the type of antibody here would be IgG. Not IgE, but IgG. So this is pemphigus. So those are the slides that we have for type 1 and type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. Kindly read on your notes, on your books, for further study on those topics. So stay safe and good night.